the message this morning is what are you doing with your salvation and it's coming from the book of Titus New Testament book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 14 blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for those who are watching through social media YouTube and Facebook God bless you when you uh, watch this message I hope that it's a bit of edification for you I've been praying for that so let's go to the scripture Titus 2 verse 11 and 14 every Sunday we have church right here in this room and sometimes we meet in Whitfield, Virginia we haven't done that in a while but we uh, we we're gonna, gonna try to upload a preaching every Sunday uh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ keep preach, uh, praying for us Titus 2 verse 11 to 14 for the grace of God that brings salvation for the grace of God that brings salvation had appeared to all men. This is the verse that I preach, three preachers memorized. Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world today, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us mm -hmm. from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar, a peculiar people, yep. sellers of good works. And the title of the mistress <clears throat> is, What Are You Doing With Your Salvation? And the Bible right here explained to us how do we have to do, how do we have to live after you're saved. Bible says right here on verse 12, the salvation that is teaching us when you are saved, your salvation is teaching you something. Verse 12 is teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Today, he's talking about today, he's not talking about when you're on your sick bed or, or when, uh, when you're about to die and you want to repent of your sins. Yes, repent of your sins, but he's talking about today, he's talking to the saved saints of God. He's not talking to sinners, Paul, right here. He's talking to saints, sanctified, saved uh, 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 Christians, uh, supposed to be a peculiar people, a different, a distinction from the ungodly yes. and the godly. That's what he's saying right here. When you are saved, your salvation is going to teach you these three things. That you have to deny ungodliness, you have to deny worldly loss, and you should live soberly and righteous life today, not tomorrow. Alright? Don't be polluted with sin. That's what he's saying. Amen. And if you start, and, and don't be polluted with sin, denying ungodliness, denying sick, sin, wickedness, and do not disobey the commandments of God. That's the first thing that Paul addressed right there. And number two, he says, worldly loss. And if you go to the KJV dictionary, it says that worldly loss is passions for obtaining the good things of this life. How many people do you know, they're in such a rush. They're in such, not, they don't want anything in their way. They want to enjoy the passions of this life. What are those passions, preacher? Passions of having a diploma hanging from their wall, wall that says this is a doctor in this, a doctor in that, or he has another degree of this and another degree of that, or the passions of the world that come through sports. How long, how many people are passion for football? How many people are passion for f baseball, passion for NBA uh, uh, games? And those are the passions of this world. And the Apostle Paul is telling Tito, T Titus right here, don't worry about the passions of this world because they're temporary, tempor temporal enjoyment. How long is the football season last? Four months? Six months? That's your enjoyment. How long is the basketball season last? Four months, six months, and that is the temporal enjoyment. People is attached to the games. They go to the stadiums. They are attached to the TV, watching this a temporary loss, this worldly loss. Right? And say, stop. There's people who run and run this way to create a business, to create this empire, 
and, and they, they don't want nothing to do with God. We have others who try to go to the moon, like NASA. They spend billions and billions of dollars in trying to go to the moon and trying to go out of space and do this and do that, and things that have really no meaning because where you have to go is to the third heaven, not to the moon, not to Mars, but to the third heaven. And how can you get there? You don't need a rocket, a, a special suit. You don't need a, 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 a millions and millions of dollars spending a rocket ship. You need the salvation that comes to, to all through grace, through Jesus Christ. Right. All right. Set your mind on things of above, the Apostle Paul is saying, and not the things of this world, Colossians 3.2. Right. And then he goes on to say, another thing that salvation teaches you, if, if for you as, uh, that call yourself Christians, and you're still living according to the world, and you're still after running after, after the temporary things of this world that bring you in judgment, enjoyment, running out to the passions of this world. You know what? Another passion of this world is the elections. People is running with this temporary. How long is, is the enjoyment of your next president is going to last? Four years? Four years? And your enjoyment is gone. You run like a dog from this rally to another rally. Oh, this, my candidate is going to be in Charlotte, and my candidate is going to be here. I'm going to run after him, and I'm going to make sure that everybody votes for the Republicans, and I'm going to make sure that everybody votes for the Democrats. Why don't you worry that everybody makes it into the kingdom of heaven? Preach. Huh? But you're running after these passions of this world that have no meaning. No meaning. The law of the Lord is perfect. Bible says. And it says, Apostle, 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 let's get, live sober. Live sober means don't be a drunk. Don't be a drunk. Don't be hooked on, on, on heroin. Don't be hooked on cocaine. Don't be hooked on marijuana. Now it's not that, that that's being a sober. Being a sober is not being uh, participate in any of those things. But how many Christians today you know they're hooked on CVS? CVS is their drug dealer. They need to have one pill for this and another pill for that and another pill for that. They're addicted to so many narcotics. Are you already a Christian? Why you need so many narcotics? Huh? Living sober means to live without excess. To, don't, don't, be, don't, don't make things to have so many of one thing. How many people you know they have a lot of clothes? They have the closet full of clothes that they don't even use. Ladies, how many ladies they have shoes? How many shoes do they have? They have to have a red shoe, a yellow shoe, a high heel shoe, and this shoe for this dress, and this shoe for that skirt. I don't know, I know how many shoes my wife owns. It's like maybe two or three at the most. The closet is not full of shoes. But there's Christian ladies out there who have the closet full of shoes, huh? full of clothes. And there's guys who have cars, go every two years, they go to the dealer and they switch the car for another car and they keep getting more and more in debt every single year because they have to have another car, excess, excess. There's a guy who collects DVDs, is close to have 600 DVDs. Why do you want so many DVDs to begin with? Living in excess. Why do you want to have association with Hollywood and garbage? Huh? There's people who own so many credit cards. They have credit cards, Home Depot credit card, Lowe's credit cards, Jesse Penny credit card, and to go get underwear, they need a credit card too. Huh? They cannot even buy underwear without a credit card anymore. And the Bible is saying, living sober, living sober. Huh? There's a lot of people who goes to the salon, to the beauty salon, and this goes for guys and for ladies, and I'm not talking about homosexual <coughs> bishops of conference that they go to the salon to get manicures. Mm -hmm. huh? And we have the ladies in the church who are tired to have their, their, their hair white and they do, it, they do it black. And three months later, now they're blonde. And when Christmas comes around, now they want their hair red or they want it green. Huh? Why do you want to go to the beauty salon in excess? How much money do you spend in the beauty salon? Can you imagine Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, saying, well, I'm getting ready to give birth to, the, to, the, to, to, to Jesus Christ. Let me go to the salon and do my hair. Can you imagine Ruth going to the salon? Can you imagine the daughters of Selophia going to Moses and saying, we need you to give us an inheritance? They did not went to the beauty salon before they went to Moses. 
They did not do that. The women of, of, of the Bible, they did not. There was no salons in, 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 in the Bible times. And there was no need for these women. The one who went to the beauty salon was Jezebel. There we go. She's the one who painted her head and painted her face every single time. And then we have, Bible says, don't live with excess. And then we have these women's, Christian women's. Today you will see them. In, they get before the mirror 30, 40 minutes. They do their makeup, their lipstick, and everything. Used to get on Facebook and do a selfie. And, and not, it's not enough that they do the selfie of themselves. They go to their bedrooms. And from their bed, they're taking selfies of themselves for all the guys out there to see a woman in her bed, a Christian woman in her bed taking selfies. I got a scripture for you. If you're a Christian woman who are taking selfies of yourself in your bedroom, shame on you. I have a scripture for you. Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is on the file. You're supposed to keep the bed pure. How does your husband feel when you post him pictures of yourself from your bedroom? You're not keeping the bed pure. You're on the file on the file the bed. The Bible says, but gores and commongers, God will judge. What are you looking for? Posting pictures of yourself from your bedroom. What is your intention? What are you trying to do with that picture? Huh? You have no business posting pictures of yourself in your bed, in your bedroom, on Facebook, if you call yourself a Christian. Of course, but if you're not saved, you can do whatever you want. But if you're saved, you're supposed to keep the commandments of God in the bed. Marriage is honorable and all, and the bed is on the file. Keep your bed pure. Praise God. So live sober, the Bible says. Then it says, another thing that salvation teaches you is, righteous and godly at this present world today is telling Titus, say, instead Paul is telling Titus, all these things you got to do today, Titus, not tomorrow, right. not the day that you're sick or old and you're ready to die, no. If you want to see heaven, you have to practice all these things. Stay away from ungodliness. Stay away from worldly laws. Be sober and righteous life. Hmm? Purity of hair, keeping his commandments. So the Apostle Paul knew of the temptations of this world, and that's why he wrote this letter, and he said there's a lot of temptations out there, and you guys have to keep yourselves pure. And the question to those who are watching is this. Uh, what are you doing with your salvation? I hope you're not taking selfies on yourself from your bedroom and uploading them on Facebook. That is not for a godly woman to do. All right? And somebody could say, well, I'm too young. I'm just a teenager. I have never done the sins of my father. You know, my daughter could say, I have never put a beer in my mouth. I have never smoked. I have never been out there fornicating. Because she's a young lady that we, we train in the ways of the Lord, and she has not done any of those things. You know, and somebody else could say, well, I'm very young too. I have not tried marijuana. I have not tried beer. I have not tried, I have not done the sins that you've done, Edgar. What do I do with my salvation? Let's look at the Bible. Let's look at what young children, young teenagers, young ladies, and young men did with the salvation, their salvation in the Bible. <coughs> Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, and you know the scripture, and you know the story. Yeah. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, this is what it says, and the child, there we go, it doesn't say the young man or the adult uh, man, it says the child. The Bible uses the word child, and the child Samuel Minister unto the Lord. Amen. It was the little boy, a little children, who was left at the temple by his mother because his mother could not have children. And she went before the Lord, not to the drugstore. She went before the Lord and said, Lord, I want to have a children. If you bless me with a child, I will dedicate these children unto you. And that happened. And, I, and she brought this child to the temple. And she left this child to be uh, raised by Eli, the, the priest right there. And this child was there from his whole entire life. His mother, the Bible said, will make a new 
uh, a new coat, a new garment for him every year, year, and she will deliver this garment to him every year, so he had a new garment to wear. So this child was living in so was sober. He didn't have so many shoes in the closet. He didn't have so many garments, and he lived sober. And the child was ministered unto the Lord. I guarantee you that these children was taking a broom and sweeping the tabernacle, sweeping the temple. I guarantee you these children took a rag and he was wiping everything clean to make everything spotless in the temple. Samuel's toys were the pulpit and, and the church right there in a way. I'm not saying that he was disrespecting the things, but that's where he grew up. He grew up around church. He grew up around the temple. He knew the, how to do the sacrifices. He knew how the measurements of the pulpit. He knew the, 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 the law of God. He knew the scripture. Constantly he was praying, he was fasting, and he was memorizing the scripture. Amen. Among all other things. Huh? But you can say, well, it's easy. When somebody grew up in an environment like that, it's easy to stay away from ungodliness. It's easy to stay away from worldly laws. It's easy to live sober because that's what the priest Eli was teaching him. You know what? If you read the scripture and you're familiar with the story, the sons of Eli were very wicked and the sons of the devil, the Bible says. When the people came to the temple to deliver dice and offerings and when they delivered the, the meat, for the sacrifices and things, they will have, the Bible said they had a long hook, and they will get the meat with a hook, and they will keep the meat for themselves. They were having sex with women in the doors of the temple. So those were, uh, Samuel grew up hearing these things that the sons of Eli were doing, and he probably watched them do these things, and Samuel did not corrupt himself. Samuel practiced what Paul told Titus years later. He stepped away from ungodliness, and he stayed away from worldly laws, because Samuel, the Bible says that he was fasting and praying while the sons of Eli were robbing the meat, and they were eating and eating. They were probably very fat while Samuel was fasting and praying. Amen. Huh? Samuel could say, well, well, these guys are the sons of Eli, and they're getting away with all this thing. But I'm going to serve the Lord. He probably remember the words of Joshua and say, but I'm going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know what Lord they're serving. I don't know what they're doing. But my mother led me here. My mother then he came unto the Lord. And I'm going to serve the Lord. That's what I'm going to do with my salvation. I will serve the Lord. Uh -huh. I will serve the Lord. And Samuel did not contaminate himself. He, he, he denied ungodliness. He denied worldly loss. And he li lived a sober and righteous life today. Two, two books in the Bible are named after him. Two books in the Bible are named after him. Uh -huh. So if you're in high school and you have friends like the son of Eli who come to you with pornography and say, hey, look here, watch this. Hey, smoke this, it's gonna make you feel good. Hey, uh, uh, there's a little, we're gonna have a party, we're gonna have some beer, come, come, and hey, why don't we go steal, why don't we cheat on the exam? Why don't we steal the exam from the teacher and rob the answers and have the answers? You know what, you gotta do what Samuel did. You gotta continue living holy, stay away from ungodliness, stay away from worldly lust. Or you might have a friend that is ungodly and not safe and is trying to tell you, hey, listen to this music. Listen to this pop music. Hey, you know what I'm doing? I'm going to go to the salon and I'm going to do this. Hey, you know what my other friends say and, and do? Let's do this too. You know what? You're going to continue living godly and righteous life if you have those kind of friends because Samuel was not friends with the son of Elah, but they live in the same house. And he stayed away from that. And you say, well, that was a boy. All right, let's go to Numbers 27. We have the example of not one young lady, mm -hmm. but five. Yes. Five ladies, the, the daughters Girls. of Selophea. Uh -huh. Numbers 27, I cannot pronounce it very good, but it's right there. The daughters of Selophea. The daughters of Selophea. It was five young ladies who kept their self pure and her father died, and, and when Moses came to, to organize the census to divide the land and to give the inheritance unto all the Israelites, they discovered that there was the, the, the daughters of Selophia, their father died, and said, well, now what do we do? 
So the daughters of Selophea went before the Lord, went before Moses and said, Look, my father kept himself from ungodliness. My father kept himself from worldly laws. My father, Moses, never betrayed you because when Korah rise up against you, Moses, my father stood with you. My father was a godly and righteous man. And for that, we demand that we, you gave us inheritance too because we have kept ourselves pure. We have kept these commandments too. And you know what? If that was not true, the whole tribe of Manasseh, the whole 12 tribes of Israel could have come to Moses and said, you know what, Moses, these women are lying because we watch them putting so much makeup. We watch them on Facebook uploading selfies. We watch them in the community spreading gossiping. We watch these five daughters of Selophia having one boyfriend with this tribe and having another boyfriend with another tribe. They're basically a horse. But that was not a testimony of the five daughters of Selophia. There were five young ladies who kept themselves pure until they find a husband. And they have a good testimony. And that's what they did with their salvation. They kept the commandments of the Lord and the commandments that, he, that their father taught them to do. All right? So praise the Lord for good testimony. We have Ruth, a widow, a young widow, who decided to stay next to her uh, mother-in-law and trust on the Lord for the Lord's provision. Another widow on the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 36 to 38. The Bible said that this widow, Anna was her name, was married for seven, with her husband for seven years. And after that, she stayed widow until 84 for a long time. Verse 37 says that she will never go away from the temple serving day and night. Mm -hmm. Serving day and night with fasting and prayer and telling everyone about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what these women did with her salvation. Now tell me this. How many widows, how many Christian widows you, you know today? Ask yourself this question. What so and so and so that is a widow is doing with her salvation? And that goes for women and for guys who are widows. What are you doing with your salvation? You have the example of the Bible of one woman who decides to serve the Lord day and night by fasting and praying and preaching the goodness of the Lord. What are you doing with your salvation? Right? The women at the well, after she spoke with Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ told her, what is your husband? Oh, I don't have one. That's right. Because you've been with five, and they're not your husbands. And after Jesus Christ continued preaching to these women, this woman runs back to the town and she started preaching to the whole entire town. What are you doing with your salvation? After you have a conversation where you, some of you claim that you talk to God. And what are you doing with that? Now we go to the book of Mark chapter 5 and you have the, young, the man who was full of demons. The man possessed with a legion of demons. And Jesus Christ comes and casts out the devils into the swines, and the devils run after the pigs, and they go and, 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 and to the deep. And later you see what this man did with his salvation. Book of Mark, chapter 5. Let's go there real quick. Book of Mark, chapter 5. Bible says that he was violent. They were tying him up with chains or something like that. He will break the chains. He had so much power, he was running around naked. And people was trying to go around him because they didn't want to be in, they didn't want to encounter him. But after he had an encounter with Jesus Christ, and after Jesus Christ set him free from his sins and from his from his uh, legion of demons, the Bible say that he, he was no longer undressed, he was no longer naked. He was sitting on his right mind, the Bible say, and he was sitting with clothes. The Bible said that he was not shouting obscenities. How many Christians you know today that they still sharing obscenities? Hmm? You go on the street and they tell you, I'm an effing Christian. Huh? Or you hear him at work. Sometimes at work when nobody's around and, and they hit yesterday I hit my I hit myself with a hammer and now you say ah oh. but oh, you know so I, I, I know Christians that hit themselves with something and they start cussing. What are you doing with your salvation? He was not violent anymore after he got saved. He was on his right mind. And you know what? Out of all things, he begged. 
He said, Lord, Jesus, please let me go with you. I want to follow you. I want to go with you. And Jesus Christ said, no. You go back and tell your friends and your household. That was the commandment. He said, you go back and tell your friends. Right here, verse 19, 5, 19. However, Jesus told him that, he said, go home to friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and how I have compassion on thee. And the Bible says that this man not only went to his friends and to his household, but he evangelized ten cities. <laughs> ten cities. What are you doing with your salvation? The Lord Jesus Christ cast out the devils out of you, and you haven't even told your grandmother or your mother-in-law that you're saved. You don't tell anybody that you're saved. You're ashamed of the gospel. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Some of you don't even pray for your food like I was telling you the other day. All right? He evangelized ten cities. What are you doing with your salvation? Zacchaeus, a wee little man. When he got saved, that's what the song says, right? Zacchaeus, a wee little man. Praise God. Zacchaeus, a wee little man, when he repented, he started giving back, but he stole four times. Wow. Some of you... Have even made that phone call. I'm sorry for being a drunk. I'm sorry for being whatever. I'm sorry for doing this to you. I'm a new creature in the Lord, and I'll try to repay what I owe you. I try to, to do right now. Forgive me. Bible commands us to forgive. Bible commands us to, to do it right. Zacchaeus, that's what he was trying to do. He said, Lord, I understand now. I'm not going to steal anymore, and I'm going to give back. Four times. He practiced what Paul was telling to Titus. Be sober. You know? Zacchaeus, right there, he was not going to steal no more. He was not going to have enough money to, to have excess of shoes and excess of cars and excess of all this stuff. He was going to live right. He forgot to... Uh, he, this, I'm not going to live with worldly loss. So money for Zacchaeus, when he saved... He put the money away because money was his Lord. Like we have this banner right here. Jesus will not be your Savior unless he's your Lord. Many people call upon the name of, the, of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus don't judge. No, Jesus is love. But they never make Jesus Christ their Savior. Huh? And you, what are you doing with your salvation? Are you preaching? Are you, that you stop robbing? Are you still cussing? You haven't even stopped smoking, some of you. And you call yourself Christians. What are you doing with your salvation? Huh? Now, some people, now that they get saved, of course, they start feeling better because they're not drunk. They're showing up for work on Monday, and, and they have more energy. And, of course, things are going better. And now they will just work all the time. Now they don't have time for God. They don't have time to go preach. They don't have time to, to deliver the good news. Because now they have exchanged. Uh, now, before they were drunk, so they never worked. But now they work all the time. You know, we have people who, when they were worldly and wicked and lost sinners, they knew the names of the basketball players. They knew the names of the football players. They knew the names of baseball players. They will tell you the season. They will tell you everything about sports. They were like encyclopedias for sports. But ask them if they have memorized a book of the Bible. Ask them if they have memorized John 3.16. They have not even memorized John 3.16. And that's what Paul is saying. Forget worldly laws and the passions of this world. Hmm? They used to memorize entire songs. Elvis Presley songs. John Leno, Frank Sinatra, uh, uh, Elton John. And now they cannot even memorize the Bible. What are you doing with your salvation? Hmm? A lot of ladies, they used to dress like prostitutes. They used to be prostitutes. Today, they're not prostitutes no more. They just dress like prostitutes and comes to church. What are you doing with your salvation? You only change one thing. But you, if you're a new creature in the Lord, you throw away those garments of a hard lot and you put the, the dress of a godly lady. Eh? And for the guys, they used to have two or three women 
Today they only had one, but when they see one on the street, they go after her with lust. And the Bible says, put away all worldly lust. All worldly lust. You used to be a thief on the world, stealing stereos, car, cars, stereos, uh, DVDs from the store. I don't know what you stole. And today, some people stole from God, keep stealing from God. Hmm? Some people that used to uh, pray God, now they pray strong. What are you doing with your salvation? Huh? That is the question this morning. What are you doing with your salvation? Because the Bible right here says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us. Yes. Salvation teach you to deny ungodliness and worldly laws. We shall live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope, Jesus Christ. Verse 14, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, sellers of good works. Is that what you do with your salvation? Are you a peculiar people? Do you have good works on your life? Can people say that about you? Can people see the good works in your life? Or can people still see you uh, uh, cussing and lying and stealing? Huh? People still see you with a cigarette in your mouth and you call yourself a Christian? How can you be a peculiar people when you're still on Facebook from your bedroom mm -hmm, posting selfish? And you're a married woman. You're a married woman posting selfish from your bed from your bedroom, you need to repent, you need to get saved, you're not saved. You're not saved. You're not a peculiar people doing such garbage, doing the same thing that the worldly women is doing on, on, on the world. What is going to be the next thing you're going to do? You're going to try to contact your ex-boyfriends on Facebook? Hmm? Repent and believe the gospel. You cannot be a peculiar people continue doing the things of the world. Huh? So that's what the scripture today. That's the message today. What are you doing with your salvation? And the Bible right here says, salvation teaches us that denying ungodliness, worldly loss, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Today, you gotta live like this today, not tomorrow, not when you're dying. Not when you're getting ready to marry so-and-so so they can see your good works. Not when you're getting ready to get another job. Not when you're getting ready to be a, a promotion in the church and everybody has to see you that you have good works. No, every time, all the time, you got to live godly and righteous and deny ungodliness. Do like Samuel did. Why, the sons of Eli was getting fat. Because they were stealing the meat that was brought into the offering. Samuel was fasting and praying. And he grew up to be a mighty man of God. God himself said it. He said, I'm going to raise up a prophet that is going to live after me. And he's going to obey my commandments. And he was talking about Samuel. Glory to God. And he did raise a man like that. And that's why two books in the Bible are named after him. First Samuel and Second Samuel. So that is the scripture today. That is the message today. Are, what are you doing with your salvation? Are you wasting your time with your salvation? Or are you really doing what the Bible says? Examine yourself to see if you are in the faith. Yes. Father God, we come.